Hello yogis, welcome to your creative 60 minute vinyasa flow practice headed to Titibhasana Five Fly Pose. When you're ready, bring in the hands to prayer at the heart, setting your intention or dedication and then making your way to an active child's pose where the hands are spread about shoulder distance apart and the palms are pressing into your mat. It feels like the forearms are slightly lifting away from the earth. And the feeling is with the inhalation that Energy is traveling down the spine and through the sides of the body all the way to the fingertips. And with the exhalation, you feel the grounding of the hips towards the heels. And you're tuning into the Ujjayi breath. If you like to practice with Ujjayi, you can create that now. Otherwise, just keep the breath calm in and out of the nose. inhalation you will slowly start to coil through the spine so there's a doming of the upper back then you'll peel your heart through your nice straight arms and on the exhalation the tailbone tucks the belly pulls in press into the floor round your upper back inhaling peel the heart through the arms and then exhale coil in and under Cat and cow pulsation. Inhale, heart through the arms. And then exhale, coil in, press into the floor, dome the upper back. Come to neutral, shoulders slide down. Inhale, raising the right hand up to the sky. As you exhale, thread the right arm under the left and slide the back of your hand along the mat. Now the left hand can go to the top left corner of the mat. Or you could decide to maybe on an inhale raise the left hand straight up to the sky and possibly wrap that left arm behind your back. One day working towards finding the top of the right thigh and just use that connection to help open that left shoulder back a little bit more and continue to breathe into the ribs, breathe deep into the lungs, feeling the subtle twist. If you took that bind, next inhale, raise your left arm back up and then place it back next to your face. Inhale, everyone unthread the right arm, raise it up to the sky, open the chest and then exhale, place it down. Other side, inhale, raise the left arm up, open the chest to the left. Exhale, thread that left arm underneath the right, sliding the hand across the mat. Right hand can go to the top right corner of the mat or maybe on the next inhalation you raise the right arm up that's what you did with the other side on the exhale just wrap that right arm behind your back work towards finding the top of your left thigh kind of nestling the fingers in that little gap there use the connection if you can to just roll the right shoulder back a bit feel the opening in the chest shoulders If you took that bind on the next inhale, you just calmly raise your right arm back up. As you exhale, you just place it back down next to your face. Everyone inhale, unthread the left arm, and then exhale, place it back down into the mat. As you inhale, coil the right knee in. As you exhale, step the right foot back to the back of the mat. Inhale, coil the left knee in. Exhale, step back to plank. Draw energy into the center on the inhale. Expand and radiate out on the exhale. Bring the right knee in, inhale. Step back to plank, exhale. Left knee in, inhale. Back to plank, exhale. Again, right knee coils. Step back to plank. And then left knee coils. Step back to plank. Now make your way to downward facing dog. Just the fingers spread into your mat, knuckles grounded, feel the outer arms wrapping in towards the face and this lengthening down the sides of the body all the way to the outer hips. Thighs engaged eventually, heels soften down towards the mat. Just keep reaching those outer hips back. Settle. Settle with the breath, settle the gaze between the feet. Next inhalation, ripple through the spine like a wave that brings you forwards into a plank pose. Finding this pulsation in plank, you coil in on the inhale and you expand on the exhale. 
Draw energy into the center as you inhale, feel the core active, exhale, radiate. Again, inhale, draw energy in, plank pulsation, exhale, radiate. Swivel both heels to the left and drip the right toes behind your left knee. Right hand will reach up and forwards as you inhale and circle it down as you exhale. Then swivel both heels to the right, drip the left toes behind the right knee. Left hand will reach up and forwards as you inhale and circle it down as you exhale, come back to plank. Shift forwards and very slowly, like slow motion, lower all the way down to your mat. Set up for cobra pose, making sure the hands are below the elbows. Peel up the head and chest, keep the back of the neck long, inhaling. Soften down to the earth, exhaling. Again, inhale, peel up the head and chest, keep driving the legs back, and then exhale, soften. Again, cobra pose with your breath. Inhale, peel it up, send the inner thighs to the sky. And as you exhale, soften down. Curl up the toes as you inhale, awaken your legs and core. And as you exhale, press to plank, one piece. Stay for your inhale, and then downward facing dog as you exhale. Make any movements, any adjustments, whatever needs to happen. And keeping the legs straight for as long as you can, start to walk your feet up to the back of your wrists. So the feet are hip distance, follow it into a halfway lift, hands on shins if you need to, lengthen the spine and then fold on your exhale. Again, inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, go for extension and length, seal it off and fold, exhale, Uttanasana. Again, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen, and then exhale, fold, Uttanasana. This time, as you inhale in your halfway lift, turn your feet out in a V-shape and come to Malasana as you exhale, yogic squat. Hands in prayer, arms press into the inner legs as you inhale, lift the chest and crown. As you exhale, you can soften as a subtle bow towards the earth. As you inhale, press the arms into the inner legs, lift the chest. As you exhale, bow. Again, inhale, press the arms into the inner legs, malasana pulsation. And exhale, bow. Take the hands to the earth, walk the fingertips forwards and just let the chin drop towards the chest. Breathe all the way into the lower back, up through the spine, all the way up into the neck, mirroring this shape of Bhujapidasana. Then slowly start to slide the hands back. As you straighten your legs parallel your feet, inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Now, Slowly rolling up through the spine, your head will be the very last thing that wants to lift. As the head lifts, the shoulders roll back and the arms will reach up with an inhalation. Bringing the hands together, maybe gazing up. And as you exhale, bring the hands to your heart center. Set your intention, dedication, your offering for your practice. On the next exhale, release the hands down. As you inhale, gather the energy up from the earth, raise the arms up, maybe palms touch. As you exhale, dive, take the hands down to the earth, Uttanasana. Follow it to a halfway lift as you inhale and turn your feet out again in a V. Come to Malasana, yogic squat, and exhale. Press the hands into prayer, the arms into the inner legs, inhale. And as you exhale, soften the hands to the earth. Parallel the feet as you straighten your legs again, halfway lift, and just calmly step to plank pose. Shift forwards on an inhalation, and now it's your chaturanga, slowly exhale. Untuck the toes, press the hands into the floor, rise, upward dog, or cobra if you need to, and use the core to travel back to downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Settling the gaze between the feet, Checking those feet a hip distance apart. Finding the strength in the legs by reaching the outer hips back and reaching the thighs back. Find the lengthening down the sides of the body. Find that strength in the arms and the grounding of the palms. On the next inhalation, take the gaze forwards, reach the hips back, soften the legs. 
As you exhale, just step both feet behind your wrists again. Follow it to halfway lift, inhale, turn the feet out. Malasana, exhale. Hands in prayer, press the arms into the inner legs, broaden the chest, lift the crown, and then bow as you exhale, hands to the earth. Straighten the legs parallel the feet, inhale, Ada Uttanasana, and exhale, fold, Uttanasana. As you inhale, reach the arms all the way back up to the sky. Gather that energy through the feet, through the legs, raise it up. Hands come to heart center, exhale. Inhale, take the arms back up, Udva Hastasana. Exhale, swan dive and take the hands down to the earth, folding in Uttanasana. Halfway lift, inhale, turn the feet out in a V. Malasana, exhale. Find the pulsation, inhale, lift the heart. Now exhale, release the left hand into the floor and press the left arm into your inner leg. Raise the right arm up and open the chest to the right. Keep pressing that left arm into the left inner leg. Then on the next exhale, slowly lower the hand down. Swap sides, take the right hand into the earth out to the right, pressing the right arm into the inner leg and then raise the left arm up. Try to open the chest to the left, maybe gaze slightly up as long as it's not straining the neck. Then on your next exhalation, you'll just gently release. Lift the heart with one breath and then straighten the legs on a halfway lift, parallel the feet and calmly step back to plank. Shift forwards, inhale, keep driving back through the legs as you chaturanga, exhale. Rise in cobra or upward facing dog. Use the core, reach the outer hips back to downward facing dog. Settle the breath. Settle your gaze between your feet. And just start to feel that the mind is settling. Now on the next inhale, slowly raise your right leg up. Use the whole breath to lift your leg. As you exhale, bring the knee towards the chest. Come up high on the left toes. Dome your upper back and step your foot through. Look at the back foot and drop the back heel. Lift the inner arch of the back foot. Now on an inhale, start to raise the arms, lifting the torso up, lifting the frontal pelvic bones up as well. Descend in the front thigh for warrior one. Keep climbing up through the sides of the body. Maybe the palms one day touch. Now, calmly, on the next exhalation, circle your hands down and frame your front foot. Now come to a one-legged plank, radiate the right toes back, crown of the head forwards, and then drip those right toes behind the left knee. Pajra Vashistas and reach the arm up and forwards. Circle it down, coil the right knee in. Now everyone tap your left elbow with your right knee as you drop your left heel. Then come to plank or one-legged. Chaturanga, exhale. Rise on the inhale, upward facing, and then pull back to downward facing, exhaling. Next inhale, as you're ready, you're just going to slowly raise your left leg up and use the whole breath to lift up that leg. As you exhale, bring the knee into the chest, come up high on the right toes, dome the upper back and step, heel toe just next to the left thumb. Look at your back foot and drop the back heel, lift the inner arch. Now, feel the core switch on, and as you raise the torso, feel those frontal pelvic bones lift up. As the arms are lifting, you're feeling that right rib cage wrap towards the inner front ankle. Warrior one. Keep the breath smooth, steady, calm. And on the next exhalation, you're gonna slowly start to circle the hands back down to the floor. Come to your one-legged plank, radiate the left toes back, crown of the head forwards. Pajra Vashistas and drip the left toes behind the right knee. Raise the left arm up and forwards. And as you exhale, circle it down, coil the left knee. Everyone tap the right elbow with the left knee as you drop your right heel. Come to plank or one-legged plank or wait in downward dog if you're tired. Chaturanga, exhale. If you're going, it's upward facing on inhale and then back to downward facing, exhale. Take an extra breath, just get nice and steady, nice and calm. And then on the next inhale, raise the right leg back up. As you exhale, coil it through and step it through for your warrior one. 
Remember the action of the feet, lifting the inner arch of the back foot. Remember to lift the frontal pelvic bones and climb up through the sides of the body. Maybe one day the palms touch. Then on your next exhalation, start to slowly circle your hands down and frame your front foot. Come to one legged plank, inhaling. Then drip the toes behind the left knee, exhaling. Inhale, raise the right arm up and forwards. Circle it down, now fall and triangle. Shoot the right leg across to the left. Drop the left heel and raise the left arm up. That's a huge breath. Reach the arm forwards and circle it down. Come to plank or one-legged plank. Inhaling, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing and then meet back in downward facing. When you're ready, on an inhalation, you'll slowly raise your left leg up. Use your whole breath to lift it up. On the exhale, bring the knee to the chest, come up high on the right toes, step it through for warrior one. Drop the back heel, find the action in the feet. As you rise, feel the frontal pelvic bones lift, feel that energy lift all the way up the spine through to the fingertips. Then again, nice and calm, on the next exhalation, you'll start to circle the hands down and frame the front foot. Come to a one-legged plank, inhale. Drip those left toes behind the right knee, Pajva Vashistasan. Raise the left arm up and forwards. Circle it down, coil the left knee in. Fall in triangle, shoot the left leg across. Right heel drops down as right arm lifts up. And then reach the arm forwards, circle it down. Come to plank or one-legged, inhaling. Chaturanga or waiting downward dog. Upward facing dog and then back to downward facing dog if you're not there already. Slowly again with an inhale, raise the right leg up. As you exhale, coil it through, step it through for warrior one. Now just with the breath, go slow. Smooth inhale, raises you up. Feel that energy climbing up from the earth. Straight away on the exhale, take the hands back to the earth. Inhaling, come to a one-legged plank. Pajravashistasana, drip the right toes behind the left knee. Reach the right arm up and forwards on the inhale. Circle it down as you exhale. Now slice the right foot across to the left. Floating fall and triangle. Keep that right heel hovering as you raise your left arm up and forwards. Then circle it down. Plank or one-legged inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Rise, Urdha Mukha, inhaling. Adha Mukha, exhaling. Just the left side to go now. Inhaling, slowly take it up. Exhale, coil it through and step it through. Warrior one, nice and slowly. As you rise, feel the right rib cage wrap towards the front foot. Feel that energy rise up into the fingertips. Then as you exhale, take the hands back to the earth. Last time, one-legged plank, inhaling. Drip those left toes behind the right knee. Pajva Vashistasan. Reach the left arm up and forwards. Circle it down. Coil the left knee in. Floating fall and triangle. Drop the right heel. Inhale, raise the right arm up, but keep that left foot floating. And then as you exhale, circle the hand down. Plank or one-legged. Chaturanga. Exhale. Rise upward facing. Exhale back to downward facing. Settle the breath, settle the gaze again, get nice and steady, calm. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is bring the feet between the hands now. You can practice tuck jumps. Kicking the heels to the butt, maybe catching a little bit of air time. The hips might stack over the shoulders. Otherwise, just do a few bunny hops or just step your feet between your hands. No rush. If you can, you're going to float your feet down softly, slowly between the hands. Follow it to a halfway lift as you inhale, lengthening, fold, exhale. Bend both legs now and inhale, raise your arms, come to Utkatasana making the shape of sitting in a chair. Kind of feels like a lightning bolt shape. Frontal pelvic bones lift, energy rises. Now, 
bring your right thumb into your right hip crease and press that hand into the hip crease so you sit down nice and low. And slice your left elbow across the other side of your right leg. Hands are in prayer, elbows nice and wide, lengthen through the spine. And as you exhale, you wanna to feel to twist your chest open to the right. Maybe raise the right arm up towards the sky. Keep the chest nice and open. If you raised your right arm up, slowly lower it back down. Prayer towards the floor, then inhale Utkatasana. Bring the left thumb in the left hip crease. Press into the hip crease. Slice your right elbow across the other side of your left leg. Pull the belly in to create space. Left hands on top of right. Find your twist with the exhale. Crown of the head extends out of the hips. If you did it on the other side, you might slowly raise your left arm up. Feel the chest open to the left. Breathe. And if you did that, next exhale, just bring your left palm back on top of the right. Gaze to the floor, prayer to the floor. Inhale, reach up, try and touch the sky now. As you exhale, interlace the fingers behind your back. Now as you inhale, reach the knuckles back to open the chest and shoulders. Soften the legs and then exhale, bow, getting the stomach on the thighs. Now the shoulders, they're gonna slide down your back. The crown of the head just releases towards the earth. Visualize the knuckles coming over your head. So you're getting into the hips, hamstrings, shoulders. Visualize you're squeezing a block between the legs. The next inhale, sit down nice and deep and sweep your arms back up. Utkatasana. Now keep sitting down nice and deep. We're making our way to Navasana. Keep sitting down, slowly, slowly, sitting down on the mat, lifting the legs up. Come to Navasana, boat pose. If you need to grab the back of your legs, please just do that. Otherwise, radiate energy through the legs and through the fingertips. Slide the shoulders down your back, lengthen back through the crown. Steady. Now slowly make your way to Ardha Navasana. Now the lower back is flat in the mat. Now keep the legs lifted and straight. Keep the shoulder blades lifted off the mat. If you can, raise your arms up, biceps next to the ears. Find this kind of hollow body or dish shape. Lengthen from the fingertips to the toes. Then everyone interlace the fingers behind your neck. Point the elbows up to the sky. Bend your legs. Inhale, curl tailbone up. Exhale, radiate the legs out in a big V shape. Next exhale, reach that left arm through the legs. Inhale, left hand behind the neck. Exhale, reach the right arm through the legs. Curl tailbone, inhale. Exhale, left arm reaches, keep the shoulder blades up. Left hand behind the neck, inhale. Right arm reaches, exhale, radiate through the legs. Inhale, stay calm. Exhale, reach the left arm forwards. Inhale, curl tailbone up. Reach the right arm forwards. Inhale, curl tailbone. Reach the left arm forwards. Exhale. Inhale. Reach the right arm forwards. Keep going. Curl tailbone, lift shoulders. Reach the left arm. Inhale. Exhale, reach right arm. See if we've got one more, keep going. Reach, curl the tailbone up. Keep going, reach, keep the shoulder blades up. Okay, slowly release. Hug the knees in, give it a little bit of a squeeze. Now we're feeling nice and warm. Rock up to chair pose, Udkatasana. Next exhale, fold, keep the legs bent, get the stomach on the thighs. Crow pose. Hands are in the floor, shoulder distance apart, knees into the upper arms. See if you can send the sternum forwards, gaze slightly forwards and pick the feet up off the mat. Maybe it's just one foot that lifts or maybe two. Stay calm, feel the core active. Maybe work at straightening the arms a little bit if you can. Then we'll meet in downward dog. Some of you might want to chaturanga from crow or some of you just step back. So take your pick, we'll meet in downward facing dog, no rush. Settling the gaze between the feet again, settling the breath, nice and calm. And slowly starting to make your way to Anahatasana. Lowering the knees to the earth, keeping the hips above the knees, 
Walk the hands forwards and on an exhale, melt the heart, chin or forehead down to the mat. The pulsation can be a subtle coiling on the inhale and the exhale melts the heart, chin or forehead down. Find this opening in the shoulders, catch up with the breath if you lost it. And make your way to dolphin pose, shifting forward so the shoulders land above your elbows, relax your head, curl up the toes and straighten the legs. Walk your feet in and try to melt your heels down, dolphin. Keep pressing the forearms down into the earth, wake up the biceps. Only if you feel good, raise your right leg up into the air. Come onto the left tippy toes. If you still feel good, try to just kick or just lift that left foot up off the earth. Come to Pincha Mayarasana. Now what you want to do is pull the rib cage in, send the butt towards the heels and climb up through the legs. Keep pressing the forearms down, keep lifting. Then slowly, slowly make your way back to dolphin if you left it. And everyone, make your way back to forearm plank. Activate the core and then expand from the core. Release your hips to the floor for sphinx. Lift the heart, lift the kneecaps, and then exhale, release to the earth. Now interlace the fingers behind your back like we did with chair. Bend the legs and as you inhale, peel up the head and chest. Now try to lift the thighs up off the mat. Think of the feet going towards the sky. Now. Keep the thighs lifted. Next exhalation, radiate the legs back. Keep the thighs lifted, radiate the crown forwards, toes back. Place the hands next to the lower ribs and rise. Upward dog. And then exhale, pull back to downward facing dog. Just stay there for a few breaths and let the spine settle. Okay, now we're going to bring the feet to the back of the wrists. Some of you will just walk. Some of you might practice tuck jump. Bring the heels to the butt. Maybe catch some air time. Maybe a little handstand. What you want to do is land your feet softly behind your wrists. Feel free to do some frog jumps or just walk them there. Whatever you need to do or lower from handstand. Grab the big toes, Padangustasana halfway lift. Fold and pull on your big toes at the same time. So we want to press the toes down as you pull on them. Think of the shoulders sliding down towards the hips. Eventually the legs nice and straight and the crown of the head releasing towards the earth. Big toe to hand pose. Now on the next inhalation, you're going to straighten the arms and poke the chest through. Keep a hold of the right big toe, bring the left hand on the hip. On the inhale, you're going to stand up carrying your right leg with you. The leg can be bent if you need to. If you can, radiate through that right heel. Press the big toe away from you. Stand tall. Pull the right shoulder back into its socket. Next exhale, open your foot out to the right. Maybe slowly take the gaze over the left shoulder. Possibly extend the left arm out to the left. Steady. Calm. Slowly you'll bring the gaze and the leg back to the center. Everyone raise your arms up. Biceps will come next to your ears. Try not to drop that right foot even by a millimeter. Lift it up. Now next exhalation coming via warrior three. So start to pivot. Now swing the right leg behind you. Energize the right leg. Keep the toes pointing down. Reach the arms forwards if you can. Pull the belly and rib cage in and descend through the outer right hip. And then take the hands to the earth for a jump switch. Now we want to switch legs, bringing the right foot between the hands and the left foot will land in a lunge. You can either do that via a handstand or just step your feet. Coming up to warrior two, the left arm will reach forwards, then up, then back, and that kind of windmill action is going to pick you up to warrior two. Feel that energy radiates out the arms and up the crown of the head. Get nice and deep in that front leg. Next exhalation, swing the right arm under the left with the eagle bind of the arms. Lift the elbows forwards and up. Melt the shoulders down as you sink into the lunge on the exhale. 
Inhale, lift the elbows forwards and up. Exhale, melt shoulders down. Again, inhale, lift. And exhale, melt shoulders down. Free the bind of the arms. Come to back to warrior two. Now, when you're ready, wrap your left arm behind your back and see if you can find the top of your right thigh or somewhere close. Now, start to straighten your right leg. Activate your front heel. Shift your right hip back to your inner left thigh and place your right hand directly below your shoulder on the floor or block. Now roll your torso open to the left. Draw that left shoulder down and back and radiate forwards through the crown. This is half bound triangle pose. Gaze to your right foot, bend your right leg, come to half bound half moon by floating that left foot up off the earth. Now keep radiating energy out through the left heel, lengthen forward through the crown, and then raise that left arm up. So now Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Think of taking up space. Now slowly re-bend the right leg, float the left foot down to the back of your mat. Press the right hand into the right inner leg and then inhale, raise the left arm up. Extended side angle variation. And then everyone, you're going to circle the left hand down. Walk your hands to the center of the mat, parallel the feet. Coming to a high malasana pulsation, grab the inner ankles, coil in on an inhale, radiate out as you exhale. The heart extends out of the hips. Inhale, coil in, press the elbows into the inner knees as you exhale. Again, inhale, draw energy in. Exhale, radiate that energy out. Now shift, turning to the back of the mat. Come to standing splits. Raise your right leg up nice and high. Then lower your right foot down, hip distance apart from the left. Grab your left big toe with the first two fingers, right hand on the hip and stand up. Uttita Hasta Padangustasana. Press that big toe away from you as you pull on it and draw the left shoulder back in its socket. When you're ready, slowly, steady, you're going to start to open your foot out to the left. Possibly gazing over the right shoulder if you feel steady. Possibly extending the right arm out to the right. Slowly bring the gaze and the leg back to the center. Raise your arms up, biceps next to the ears. Press down through the right foot to lift your left leg up. Then, the transition to warrior three, you wanna to start to pivot forwards, swing that left leg behind you, try to keep the left leg energized, reach through the fingertips, pull belly and rib cage in. Then you'll slowly take your hands to the earth, preparing for that jump switch. So now we wanna switch legs in the air again and land the left foot between the hands, the right foot back in a lunge. That'll happen via a handstand or just step. Come to warrior two, reaching the right arm forwards, up, then back. And again, that windmill action pulls you up to warrior two. Visualize frontal pelvic bones working towards being level and energy extending up through the crown. Next exhalation, you're gonna swing the left arm under the right. Take the eagle bind of the arms as best you can or grab opposite shoulders. Find the pulsation again, elbows forwards and up. Melt the shoulders down, sink into the lunge. Again, elbows forwards and up, inhale. Melt the shoulders down, exhale. Free the bind of the arms, warrior two. Now find the half bind. Wrap your right arm behind your back, see if you can find the top of your left thigh. Start to straighten the left leg, half bound triangle. Place your left hand directly below your shoulder on the floor or block and spiral the torso open to the right. Roll the right shoulder down and back and lengthen through the crown of your head. Legs are straight if you can manage. Slowly take your gaze down towards your left foot, half bound, half moon. Shift forwards, float the right foot up off the earth. Try to stack that right shoulder on top of the left and raise the right arm up. Lengthen through the crown, radiate through the heel, take up lots of space.
very slowly with control bend the left leg float the right foot back to the back of your mat come to extended angle reach that right arm up to the sky press your left arm into your left leg and your left leg into your left arm then circle the hand down parallel the feet grab the inner ankles for that high malasana pulsation again coil in as you inhale radiate out as you exhale again inhale draw energy in exhale expand one more time inhale press the elbows into the inner knees reach the heart out of your hips now shift to face the front coming to either side plank stepping the right foot on top of the left or grabbing the right big toe with the first two fingers for full vashistasana lift the right foot nice and high if you can if you're in the full posture steady and then drip the right toes behind the left knee pajra vashistasana get ready for it kundanyasana b circle the hand down bring the right knee to the right upper arm shift forwards chaturanga the arms and float the left foot up off the floor maybe radiate through the right leg and then chaturanga upward dog when you're ready and slowly meet back to downward facing dog steady breath and then make your way to anahatasana lowering the knees to the earth again melting the heart chin or forehead to the earth keep those hips above the knees remember if it's too much in the neck just put the forehead down steady the breath now feel free to stay here and we'll just enjoy this or if you want to do the last dolphin pose, now's the time. Shift forwards, shoulders come above the elbows. Relax your head, breathe into the space behind your heart, curl up your toes and straighten your legs. Walk your feet in for dolphin. Feel free to stay exactly like that. Or maybe on the next inhale, you'll raise your left leg up. You could possibly come on the right toes, shift the gaze forward, see if you can pick that left foot up off the floor right foot up off the floor pinch your mayarasana get steady keep pressing forearms down keep feeling the lift up all the way through the feet when you're ready if you went up slowly take your feet back down find your way back to forearm plank and expand release the hips to the floor for sphinx untuck the toes lift the heart release to the earth Dhanurasana, bow pose bend both legs, reach back grab the outsides of the feet on an inhale, kick the legs back to lift your chest drive your legs back to lift your chest higher keep breathing, use that energy of the legs to lift, keep breathing stay calm lift even higher and on the next exhalation, you're going to place the hands next to the lower ribs. Then rise upward facing dog as you press the tops of the feet down. Pull from the core back to downward facing dog. Steady. Calm. Okay. Next is bringing the feet back behind the wrists. How you do that is up to you. You could casually walk or practice tuck jumps. Feel free to practice pike jumps or handstands. Whatever you do, do it with calm control. Listen to the sound that your feet make and that your breath is making through the practice. Try to keep it soft. Float the feet down just behind the wrists. Okay, and then setting up for Padahastasana, standing on the palms of the hands. Follow it to a halfway lift, fold whenever you're ready. And if standing on the palms of the hands is a little bit too much, just grab the big toes again with the first two fingers. Eventually legs will be straight, feels like you're squeezing a block between your legs. Shoulders slide towards the hips, crown extends down to the earth. Okay, now next inhalation, 
Just straighten the arms, releasing the hands from under the feet and grab the left foot with the left hand. Bring the right hand on the hip and slowly stand up, carrying the left leg with you. And if you can, reach across and grab the little toe side of your left foot with your right hand and bring the left thumb in the left hip crease and move that left hip crease back and down. Then reach your left arm back and see if you can align the shoulders. Now press your left foot into your hand and radiate your left arm back. And slowly gaze towards the front, raise the arms up, biceps next to the ears, lift the left leg nice and high, just like we did before. Warrior three, start to pivot. Reach the fingertips forwards, drive the heel back. Steady. Then take the hands to the earth, prepare for a jump switch. Now we want to land the left foot between the hands, the right foot steps back. Get ready for Pajvottanasana. So the back heel is down like it is in Warrior 2. Halfway lift, straighten the legs if they're not already, and then fold over your straight left leg. Draw the left hip slightly in and back. Visualize a nice neutral pelvis and think of lengthening through the spine all the way towards the left foot. Breathe patient breaths into this hamstring. And when you're ready, placing the right hand on either the inside or the outside of the left foot, the left thumb comes into the left hip crease. If you get the shoulders stacked, left on top or right, you could possibly raise the left arm up. Paravrita Trikonasana. Think of lengthening the crown of the head out of the hips and radiate energy out the arms. Then, next exhale, bring the left hand to the left hip. Bend your right leg, take the right hand forwards under the right shoulder. And see if you can, again, stack your left shoulder on top of your right. Paravrita Adha Chandrasana. Now slowly bend your left leg, step the right foot to the back of your mat. Now press your left arm into your left inner leg and raise your right arm up in this extended angle variation. Now either stay there or wrap the right arm behind your back. Either stay there or see if you can find a full bind of the left arm under the leg. Possibly straighten the leg for this bound trigonasana variation. And then if you want to go to Bird of Paradise, bend your left leg, take the gaze forwards and step the right foot forwards hip distance. And maybe start to stand up on the inhale. When the chest is lifted, on the next exhale, you could possibly radiate out through the left leg. Bird of Paradise. Now, if you went there, slowly reverse the process. Start to place your left foot down. Everyone step your right foot calmly back and release any binds. Take your hands around to the center of the mat for a wide-legged forward fold. On the exhalation, you're just gonna fold, placing the hands into the earth. Now, feel free to stay in this wide-legged forward fold exactly as you are, or if you wanna press up into tripod headstand, Think of chaturanga in the arms and float the feet up off your mat. Keep thinking of magnetizing the elbows slightly towards each other. Keep pressing the palms down into the earth. If you went upside down, slowly re-straddle the legs, float the feet back down to the mat. And then everyone inhale, halfway lift. Walk your hands around to the back of the mat towards the right foot. Standing splits, raise the left leg up, then lower the left foot down, hip distance apart from the right. Everyone grab the outside edge of the right foot with the right hand, stand up with the left hand on the left hip. Remember if it's too much, just bend your right leg. Otherwise the left hand reaches across, grabs the little toe side, put the right thumb in the right hip crease, just reminds that hip to descend, and then extend the right hand back. Look for nice level shoulders. Press that right foot into the left hand and reach that right arm back. Find the standing balancing twist. Then gaze forwards, biceps up next to the ears. Lift the right leg. Warrior three, just like before. Descend through the outer right hip, radiate through the fingers and back leg. And then take the hands to the earth. 
last jump switch. Now we want to land the right foot between the hands, left foot back in a lunge. Feel free to do that just by stepping. Otherwise, one day, handstand switch. Pajvottanasana, back foot is down like it is in warrior two. Halfway lift, straightening the legs and fold over your straight right leg. Draw the right hip back like someone's thumb is pressing into that hip crease. Breathe. Okay, preparing for Paravrita Trigonasana, either the left hand on the inside of the right foot or outside. Then when you're ready, move the thumb into the hip crease again, stacking the right shoulder on top of the left. Radiate through the crown. Once you feel the stack of the shoulders and only then, you can raise your right arm up. Open the chest towards the right. Lengthen the crown out of the hips, take up lots of space. Make this pose feel expansive. Gaze back to the earth, bring the right hand on the right hip. As you move the left hand forwards under the shoulder, the left foot floats out of the floor. Kind of like what it does with Warrior 3, radiate that leg back, then see if you can stack the right shoulder on top of the left. Paravrita Ara Chandrasana, revolved half moon. Okay, and then everyone gaze to the floor, hands to the floor, step back and bend your right leg. Bring your right hand to the inside of the right leg and raise the left arm up, easy extended angle. Stay there or bind your left arm behind your back or thread your right arm under. Now start to radiate through the crown, possibly straighten right leg for this bound triangle variation. If you're going to Bird of Paradise, re-bend your right leg, step the left foot forwards, come onto the right toes and get nice and steady, and then inhale, possibly stand up, lift the chest, and then maybe with an exhale, you'll start to radiate through the right leg. Bird of Paradise pose. If you went there, slowly start to re-bend the right leg, step the right foot down, then step the left foot back. Free any binds you're in, circle the hand down, walk the hands to the center of the mat for another wide-legged forward fold, this time grabbing the big toes and folding on your exhale. Enjoy this nice deep hamstring stretch. The calming quality of the forward fold could feel really good. Or maybe you have another urge to go upside down and invert. Feel free to practice tripod headstand again. Or maybe you're working at pressing up into handstand. If you're pressing up, place the hands in the floor about shoulder distance apart. Now draw the belly in. Try to lift the hips up over the shoulders and float the feet up off the earth. You can keep the legs in a nice wide straddle if you can. Press the palms down. Now, if you went up in an inversion, you're going to slowly start to lower your feet back down. Then, everyone halfway lift wherever you are. Walk your hands around to your left foot. Now, here we are. Either side plank, step the left foot on top of the right, or grab the left big toes with the first two fingers. Full Vashistasana option, or just straight up side plank. slowly drip the left toes behind the right knee Pajra Vashistasana wait for it Kundinyasana B take the left knee to the left upper arm shift forwards try to float the right foot up maybe radiate through the left leg and then let's meet back in downward facing dog okay settle the breath again settle the gaze between the feet We want to bring the feet to behind the wrists again. So how you get them there is up to you. You could just walk, you could practice tuck jumps, you could practice pike jumps, you could practice handstand, anything at all. As you're ready, you're just going to start to either jump, float or fly calmly. You'll slowly start to lower the feet just behind your wrists. Okay, so now we're ready to go a little deeper. We can go into Bhujapidasana, shoulder pressing pose. 
Now, what you want to try to do is take your right shoulder behind your right knee. Then you try to take your left shoulder behind your left knee. Try to wiggle the heels in a little bit. Try to really get those shoulders nestled through. If you can, drop the weight of your legs on your arms. The fingers are facing the same direction as the toes. Lift your heels and then try to cross at the ankles. Bhujabhidasana, squeeze the legs into the shoulders. Now, if you're feeling pretty good, firefly pose is next. Tidibhasana, press the thighs down into the arms to lift the heels up. Radiate through the legs as best you can and then slowly come to sit on the earth. Okay, coming into the counter pose, Purvottanasana. Hands about an elbow distance away, press down through the hands and heels, lift the hips up. Breathe. Next exhale, lower down. Everyone bend your legs, bring the soles of your feet together and grab your big toes with the first two fingers. Now, lengthen the spine, lift the chest and try to float the feet up. If you feel pretty steady, then try to straighten the legs out to the sides, like making a big V shape, but just holding the big toes. Get nice and balanced. It's just like you could stay here all day, meditating, slowly bring the legs together. Try to lift the chest, keep sliding the shoulders down, lengthening back through the crown. And slowly start to lower the legs back down. Okay, everyone just turn side on on your mat and straddle the legs nice and wide. Upa Vista Konasana. Now you could just keep the fingertips on the floor behind you and lift the chest. Or you could inhale, raise the arms up. And then exhale, start to fold forwards. Now feel free to just rest your hands into the earth or elbows. Or you could grab a hold of the feet, grab a hold of the big toes. Really any option, but... Making sure you're not forcing here. Just follow that nice calm breath. Try to lengthen the spine as best you can and slide the shoulders down. Slowly, slowly make your way back up. Use your hands to bring your legs back together a little bit with the legs bent. Just lean your hands back and windscreen wipe the legs from side to side nice and slowly. Spin forwards again on your mat, bend your legs, reach your arms through your legs and slowly, using the core, make your way slowly down onto your mat. Give the knees a little squeeze in before we set up for bridge pose. Place your feet flat in the earth, fingertips just about to touch the heels. Press down through your feet, see if you can lift from the outer hips, coming into bridge. You might interlace the fingers underneath you and reach the knuckles towards your heels. And you can think of sending your heart towards your chin, but the butt towards the back of the knees. So you want to try to lengthen the spine. Keep the breath nice and calm. Keep pressing actively through the feet. Next exhalation, when you're ready, you'll slowly release the grip of the hands, roll the spine down. Just let the knees knock together, gather some energy for another set. Now you could do a repeat of bridge, so exactly what you just did, or you might take it to deeper variations like Udvadhanarasana wheel pose. When you're ready, you'll lift your hips up and either stay there or take the hands under the shoulders. You could press up onto the top of the head first, adjust anything that needs to adjust, and then press up into wheel. Now find the action of the legs, so keep the legs very strong by pressing down through the feet. Send the inner thighs towards the mat. Keep pressing the palms down, keep finding the power in the legs. If you want to do a little wheel push up, just lower the crown of the head down, bending the arms, and then you straighten the arms and press back up. Breathe calmly. 
slowly when you're ready you'll touch in towards chest and roll down vertebrae by vertebrae bring the soles of the feet together let the knees knock open wide for supta baddha left hand on the heart right hand on the stomach just close down the eyes letting everything settle slowly take this to a twist just bring the knees back together if you want to put the right ankle over the top of the left knee and then drop both legs to the right feel free otherwise just keep both legs bent and drop them to the right or take your favorite twist arms are outstretched by the sides breath is really deep into the rib cage Thing to do but just breathe. Now if you put your ankle on your knee you'll slowly take it off and then bring the legs back to center. Now I'll set it up for the other side. So mirror exactly what you just did in the other side twist. Try to feel that the right rib cage is really getting lots of deep breath. The right shoulder is nice and relaxed. Even the jaw nice and relaxed and all the facial muscles. Then when you're ready, using just a little bit of core strength, bring your legs back to center. Give the knees a little squeeze in or take a happy baby pose, reaching up and grabbing the outsides of the feet. Press down onto the tops of the feet, press the shoulder blades into the mat, slide the shoulders down, try to release the sacrum down. Feel free to stay here with the legs bent or maybe you want to radiate the legs out straight. Shavasana, letting the palms face the sky in your gesture of receptivity. You're open to receive the benefits of your practice. As you let your legs be really heavy in the mat, get a sense of any oxygenated blood that's moving through the legs. Or maybe you just feel this work in the inner groins, the adductors, thighs, hamstrings. Maybe you feel the work we did in the hips, maybe the spine, perhaps it's the shoulders that feel nice and spacious, or this strengthening of the arms. Now just soften the muscles around the base of the neck, let all those facial muscles relax. The crown of the head gently, gently extends out of the shoulders. The shoulders slide down your mat. The buttocks lengthens to the heels. The heels gently lengthen away from the buttocks. The whole body is relaxed in your mat. You let go of any control of your breath. these couple of minutes of rest. Let everything soak in. Shavasana.
start to bring some gentle movement to the toes and fingers. Maybe take that full body stretch. Ready, you'll bend your left leg and roll to your right side. Be there just for a couple of breaths. Very slowly, keeping this nice quality of calm. Make your way to a comfortable seat. Let the spine be uplifted. The crown of the head extends up to the sky. Acknowledging this time and space you created for yourself and your practice. Bringing the hands to the heart center. Acknowledging your effort. When you're ready, you can bow out your practice. As always, namaste.